we're going to discuss the different positions and we're going to discuss the different courses of fire that you will fire while here for the first three days at Camp Perry. The most important thing to have whenever we're doing any of this is safety. So at all times, be conscious as to where your barrel is pointed, uh, how your equipment is situated, what's going on around you, where your ammo is, so on and so forth. For the purpose of this class, I will not have any live ammunition here with me. And I will leave the muzzle cover on the rifle and the ECI in. When you come to your position, uh, or prior to coming to your position, you're going to have a squatting ticket. And on that squatting ticket, we'll lay out what range you're on, and what position you're in, and what relay you're on. Very important. I see a lot of folks on President's Day running from Viali to Rodriguez, and from Rodriguez to Viali, because they didn't look to see which range they were on first. They found out they were on relay one, position 29, and they were realized as they went up there they were in the wrong range so they have to run back so please the day before check your packets see which position which relay which range you're on in the morning at about 7:30, they'll call the line or all the competitors to come up to the line so let's say we're on point 29 we'll all march up to point 29 and we'll wait for roll call once they've established that there's four or six relays there, they'll send you back to get ready. On a typical four relay ev an event, relays one and two will remain on the line. Relays three and four will go to the pit. For the purpose of the president's match and the leg match, you may have six or seven relays. Relays one and two may go to the, stay on the line. Relay four will score relays um, three, five may go to the pit or relays five and six may go to the pit it'll it'll rotate around along with your packet will be a book that lays out everything that's going to happen here please pay attention to that and read it tonight you'll have your packets today for tomorrow and, and along with that is a sheet full of stickers keep the stickers with you at all times because when you score you need to put a sticker on you on the other competitors uh, uh, scorecard and you may need up to two of those uh, and we'll talk about scoring in our last segment so you need stickers know where you're going to be so on and so forth the first position that you're always going to fire is going to be the offhand or standing position and as we said before find the best piece of real estate you can in this case the most piece level piece of ground is right here so I'm going to build my position around this piece of real estate. Now what real estate do you own? Let's say that this is point number seven. From the marker that's on the ground that says seven, you own from that marker to the marker that says number eight. What you do not want to do is go on either side of those markers. It's very critical because now you're taking your competitor's real estate and by the rules you could end up having an issue. So let's say for the purpose of this that I have the marker on the ground there. I'm going to build my position in my real estate. A lot of folks that are left-handed tend to hug the left-hand side of the real estate. If you're right-handed, you tend to hug the right-handed side. You don't have to do that. Stay somewhere where the ground is preferable on your real estate. And for me, it's right here. I'm going to build my position from here. Now, what is your position? It's you and your equipment in relation to the target. I want to be able to naturally look down range and see my target. Again, if we do it naturally, it eliminates the possibility that we're going to end up firing on the wrong target. So, target seven, down range. I'm going to situate myself. I have seven down range. I'm a left-handed shooter. So now I'm going to build my position. You have your scope. You have your, your cart or your stool. It's a real advantage when you're doing standing especially. For me, I like having the cart where it's close to my left toe and I like having my scope where I can just look through it without having to do anything wild with my head. Remember, having a natural point of aim is going to help you a lot. For the purpose of the class, I'm going to lower this a little bit so I can see everybody and they can see me. So now, 
I have my real estate, I have my gear, I'm within my markers so that I'm not on my neighbor's real estate, and you only have three minutes to do this. So the more you prepare ahead of time, the better off you are. Before you come to the line, if you have a sweatshirt and a coat, have your sweatshirt on, throw your coat on, and just wheel your stuff up to the line and get situated. You cannot handle your rifle normally when you first come to the line until you get to the three minute prep period. Okay, once I have everything established, my magazines are loaded, I'm gonna go ahead and place my scorebook up here, which I'm already gonna have the page filled out for the match. And if you don't have a scorebook, I highly recommend you buy one or get one before tomorrow <clears throat> or before Monday because the scorebook, you're gonna need it for the presidents and the leg match. Keep track of what you did. Okay, I'm gonna get everything else situated. And it looks like I'm pretty much ready to go. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, like we talked about earlier, of course I came up with the coat on my, would normally come up with the coat on, but I'm gonna shoot offhand. So again, cross your legs, put your coat on. And why do we cross our legs? Easier to get it on. Okay, now I'm set. The arm's set, the sides are tight. It's providing me support in my back so I can naturally get into position looking at the target, naturally looking at the target. My gear is already set. I have my ammo pouch. Now sometimes these straps, see how they're flapping around? Just take them and fold them over. Just put them over, over the top, okay? The target's down there, I'm looking at the target. Um, the timer, of course, is set. For in this case, I'm only going to have 10 minutes. I'm going to have my timer up there. I'm going to have my pens and pencils in place. I'm going to have this out. I'm going to get my shooting glove on. And of course, my non firing glove as well. Now I'm situated. We're in the prep period. The other thing you want to do when you're in the prep period you want to dry fire a couple. So I'll naturally get in position, feet shoulder width apart. And I'll look at the sights and I'll break the shot a couple of times just to see if my natural point of aim is good. Okay, so what I'll do to get my natural point of aim, and, and of course I'd lower the barrel, but I won't lower it in this class. I'll get situated on the target, close my eyes, move it around a little, come back to where I think it is, and I'll open my eye again. And if I'm not lined up on the target, I'll move my rear foot back or forward to make up for that difference. The front foot will stay the same. You'll pivot on your left foot. Okay, they're gonna give the command. Targets will go down. Your prep period has ended. You will have 10 minutes to fire 10 shots. Is the line ready? The line is ready. Ready on the right, ready on the left already on the firing line. Your time will begin and you may fire when your targets appear. And remember, remember what side that sling needs to be on? Not as critical here as it will be at uh, inner service. With one round load. Okay, oh, they'll do the load before they give those commands. Is the line ready? Ready on the right, ready on the left. Okay, so the targets come up. Start button. 10 minutes for 10 shots. Rifle's loaded, target's up, natural point of aim, 
which is already established, you're going to relax. You're going to concentrate on the front sight. You're going to break the shot. Target goes down. You go to your scorebook and you're going to plot on that target where, say, number one. Uh, number one. You're going to put where you think that round is going to be when that target comes up. Notice you're writing when the target is in the hole. The reason is you only have 10 minutes. You don't want to be writing when the target's in the air. When the target's in the air, you need to be shooting at it. Shot number two. You're going to relax. Break the shot. Think about where that shot had gone. Same thing. Target's in the hole. You're going to plot it. When the target came up before, it was a 10 at 1 o'clock. You're going to put number 1 in the 10 ring at 1 o'clock. You do your writing when the, pit's, when the target's in the pit. Now, I don't always do that because of me, but it's the right thing to do. And I try to do it when I can. When I'm out there Monday and Tuesday, I'll be writing when the target's in the hole. OK. You're going to do that for 10 shots. You always remember what your last shot was. After you break that shot. Yeah, after you break shot, you write it in the book and then put down where you broke that shot. So you're always a shot behind a shot, what is it? A shot behind is what you want to use in your book. Because the trick is to time your writing so it's not when you're supposed to be shooting. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about what are you thinking about when you're up here? What are you thinking about in the prep period? What are you thinking about when you're breaking these shots? What are you thinking about when you're writing in here? Breaking the shot should be a subliminal thought. You should be concentrating on the front sight and you should be relaxed and you should be walking yourself through the steps and adding pressure to that trigger but watching the front sight. Now we're alive. Our hearts are beating. Our, our eyes are getting oxygen. Blood's moving around. All of these things come into effect. There may be a little wind. You may be hearing somebody in the background talking about something or somebody next to you because they don't understand that when you're on the line, they need to be quiet so that you can concentrate. This is like golf, except nobody's won a war with golf yet that I know of. So when you're standing there, and you're concentrating on the front sight, walk yourself through your procedure. Relax, and it's going to be moving. That front sight's going to be moving. It's never going to sit there and just stay there. You want to break it on the way in, or do you want to break it on the way out? Think about that. Breaking it on the way in will guarantee that the shot is on its way in. Breaking on the way out will guarantee the shot's out. So as you have that little half moon going, or that little star pattern going, or whatever you have going, watch the front sight. Because you're, subliminally, your body will break that shot in the center of the X-ring every time. The only person that moves it out of the middle of the X-ring is you. We do that because we think too much. Let your subliminal work take effect. When you're up there relaxing, because you already established a position, right? You already established a natural point of aim so that the tube is naturally pointed at the center of that target, or 6 o'clock with the sights. All you need to do is relax, let that thing stay there, and then break the trigger without disturbing that alignment. Sounds easy. And you can do it. You literally have the ability to move the front sight or the barrel out of position faster than the bullet can, can travel from this chamber to the end of that barrel. That's how fast your mind works. So my recommendation is get up relax, natural point of aim, subliminal trigger squeeze, focus on the front sight, and let the shot go. Okay? Don't have to wrestle with it, none of that. When it's done, look through your scope. If you don't have a scope, your scorekeeper's looking through his scope to watch the, the target and the value, and he's, we see everything. There's nothing you're going to do out there tomorrow that anybody's going to remember good or bad, unless you shoot a hundred standing. They'll remember that. Anything else they will not remember. Keep that in mind. A lot of folks get nervous when they come up here. Oh, I'm at the national matches. 
I've been there. We've all been there. I've been there. Main thing is just come out, relax, settle in, break the shot, just like you're practicing in your basement. But follow the commands of the tower. Prep period means preparation, does not mean put a round in the chamber, doesn't mean any of that. Just relax and, 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 and follow the commands and you can't go wrong. It's only 10 shots standing. So you get through to standing. 99 out of 100 competitors will say, ah, oh, glad that's over with. Uh, now we can start doing the shooting they're comfortable with. 300 prone and, and, and 600. But you have to get to love the things that make you most fearful. And standing is the position, and it's the closest, that make most people nervous. So get to love your standing. I can assure you in a few years, if not sooner, if you get to love your standing, you'll be shooting 97s, 98s. Who knows? You might even be cleaning the target with 100. But it's very possible. Standing is the closest you'll ever be to the target. OK, so that's the standing position. For tomorrow, the next position that you will fire is the 300 uh, rapid prone. Again, it's always the same. You're going to get called to the line. You're going to have a, a point, and you want to find the real estate that works best for you. In this case, being a left-hander, I like a little bit of a little elevation on the left side if I could get it. And right here where I'm standing has that. And because I have a little larger midsection than most people, I can get in this position, let the belly lay in the trough, and let, I can re lean on the ledge. So it gives me a little lift naturally gives me some support. Again, position, position, getting everything naturally set for your uh, best chance at success. The mat naturally pointing at the target the way that you're going to lay on it. Between the real estate numbers, and I have it right here. The next thing I'm going to take a look at is where my scope is going to be. When I'm in the prone position, I want to be able to lay here, and I don't want to wrestle around for the scope. So you naturally want to set the scope up, and you see how it's different than when I'm standing? I have to make some changes in it. So I want to set it up so I'm naturally looking through the scope without having to fight it. So you want your position first and bring all your gear around you. And I like my cart close by. I want to have my scorebook on the ground with me. My ammunition is already loaded. I want to have that nearby. The things that I'm going to use on the mat, maybe even sight black if I need it, I usually keep that in the side pocket. And of course, my sweat towel and my timer so that I can see what's going on. So I'm building my position so that I first am naturally pointed at the target. My mat's naturally pointed at the target. My gear is in place. Now I believe here, for CMP week, you still go from standing to prone and from standing to sit, unlike we do in other places, like during NRA week. So all your gear needs to be accessible right around you. I don't need the, uh, I do not need my ammo pouch on my coat anymore, and I don't need my coat to be tight on me anymore. So we're at the 300 yard line. And I'm going to unzip the left side because I'm left-handed and I want that leg up there. Okay. Now another thing you want to be conscious of is what do you have in your pockets? Do you have, do you have a lot of things that are going to distract you? If you do, take them out. Put them in your cart. Put them somewhere else. You need to be relaxed on that mat. Now, one of the characteristics of this particular coat is that this gets in this third one gets in the way when I go to lay down. So I'm going to get that out of the way just by hooking it up. But I'm going to leave it loose because I need a lot of room for the midsection to expand when necessary. So okay, we're going to be we're in the preparation period, and in the preparation period, you want to get everything out of the way. You have your ammo ready. See, I ran out of time already. There we go. Uh, you want to have your ammo ready, preloaded in the magazines. These are empty because we're teaching two and eight. 
and you want to have them positioned where you're going to be able to grab them when you need them. And of course, because, because of the way they do it here, you need one of them with you when you start. The two rounder you need when you stand. So during that preparation period, you're going to need to get into your sling. And for 300 yards, I use five for me. It'll be different for you. Get the sling on your arm. And since there's no ciders, it actually makes the match easier with no ciders. It goes quicker. Your ciders you get during the squatted practice tomorrow. Okay, and I won't cycle this, but we'll go through the steps. Okay. Want to be on the, on the mat when they call us? And then they'll say, with a magazine, load. Okay, is the line ready? The line is ready. Ready on the right, ready on the left, all ready on the firing line. You have 70 seconds to fire 10 shots. It's a long time. You already, you already have your gear ready. As soon as the targets come up, you want to know where you're going to land, and then you're going to settle in. <clears throat> Bang. 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 That was less than a minute. You have 70 seconds. Plenty of time to concentrate on each one of those shots. Dress up the front sight, take a breath between shots, and break the shot. If you focus on the front sight and concentrate on relaxing and breaking the trigger, I can assure you all 10 shots will end up in that 10 ring. Now, what kind of things could change that? If the wind changes or if the light changes, your shots could be somewhere else. What I want you to keep in mind, since we're new at this, is click into the sun because what happens is the sun will create a shadow on your target on the opposite side and if you click into the sun you're offsetting that what happens if the sun is out of the left it makes your target appear to be larger on the right is that correct Thermbuel? you want to click to, towards the sun and it'll offset and it's only like a click or two at the most and it'll offset that enough to where your rounds will be in the right spot, even though what you're seeing is different, because it creates an illusion with that shadow. You'll be out the right side if you don't allow for that. Okay. And it's not a lot, just a little bit. Wind is another story. Your wind chart, we'll work off of that later. What are your questions on 300 rapid prone? And since we're shooting the national match, it's only 10 shots, and it's two and then eight. Well, you'll hear some people say, well, I'm using five and five. Well, do you really want to wait five shots to take a look in your scope to see if they're still on the target? You could lose a lot of points with those three extra shots. Between the, and the, during the magazine change, you can look into your scope. If you have any question in your mind, it's probably a good idea after the first two to take a quick peek in there after you reload. Take a quick peek in there and, and verify that those first two shots are in, in fact in the 10 or X ring. If they're not, make a quick adjustment or favor and then knock out those other eight shots. Because the idea is, let's say you had two nines. Oh well, two nines. You could correct, it's a click left, quick click left, two clicks left, put the rest in the 10 ring. It's still a 98, okay? Let's say you had a, a shot in the nine ring at three and you had a shot in the nine ring at nine. Oh, what do we do now? Well, what do you remember about those shots? 
Did you change your position? Did you do something different? Think about what occurred and then make the correction. The idea here is to start developing a consistency and group size uh, within your strings. Sergeant Anderson um, taught me a lesson last year about shooting a condition. Now shooting a condition is something that I haven't really tried yet. But basically the theory is that if the condition is only going to drag you from the left side of the 10 ring to the right side of the 10 ring or vice versa, then don't change the sights. You'll have groups on both sides of the 10 ring or a little across the target, but at least all of your shots will still be good. Remember what I said about natural point of aim and what we do. We're the only ones that take the shots out of the middle. So the trick is to let the rifle shoot, hang on to it, and not disturb that alignment. Uh, if you're shooting a condition, then maybe a lot of your shots will be on the right side and then the wind picks up and then worst case scenario, they'll be on the left side of the 10 ring. Yeah, it's something to think about and I'm going to have to think about that myself and, and see how well it works. Okay, what are your questions about position or the 300 rapid prone? Everybody understand about the magazine change? The two shots and the eight shots? Okay, for a total of 10. And how much time do we have when we shoot 300 prone? 70 seconds. How much time do we have when we shoot standing 10 rounds of slow fire? 10 minutes. And if it was 20 shots, it'd be 20 minutes. Okay, the next position I'm going to talk about is just slightly different. Uh, and it is the 600 yard slow fire. Well, they look the same. Your rapid and your slow fire are similar, but they're not. Let me tell you the difference, gentlemen. 600 slow fire is, uh, for the president's match, is going to be 10 minutes for 10 shots. That's a long time. Okay. So if it's a long time, naturally we want to be comfortable and relaxed. So what we'll do, in my case, I take one more notch off of the sling, just to loosen it that every so little bit. And the reason is, that I don't want to have that cuff that tight for that long. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put it on. It looks the same. I'll still go to the outside and I don't want to cut off that vein so you want to go as high as you can. You'll know when you're on that vein because you'll see this pulse. And the hotter it is, the stronger the pulse is and your eyeballs are ready to pop out. So okay, 600 prone 10 minutes for 10 shots. I'm shooting uh, 90 grain bullets at 600 yards. You could shoot your 77s, they'll be fine. Many a tournament, has been, many a match has been won with the 77s at 600 yards. Most of those Marines out there are shooting 77s at 600 yards. So, I'm going to get into position. The building of the position is the same. I'm going to get into position except the only magazine I'm going to use is going to be the magazine that has the keeper on it. Now you could use any magazine, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just found that by having that device in the magazine makes it easier because then the round doesn't have to clip in. Okay, no ammo, chamber indicators in, safety first. So I'm going to put that one in there. And again, I loosened up a little bit here because I'm going to settle a little bit closer to the ground. 600 yards. Here's what's going to happen at 600 yards. It's going to be an element of time. It's going to be an element of environment because you're laying out there. The ground is hot, you're hot, and your equipment is starting to get hot. So, like I said, you want to relax just a little bit. And basically, I relax just by loosening the sling up. I'm going to get a good position. I'm going to have my scope set where I could just glance over and see the target. I'm going to have my scorebook here and my pen. And I'm going to have my ammunition laid out in a box right where I can get to it. So that when I fire a shot, I just have to reach in and throw another one in there and close it. Go back into it, lay down. Now my body is going to be behind this rifle. You Watch where your feet are. You don't want to do this because that will throw your shots. That's, everything you do back there transmits to that front sight. So I'm going to get in a good position, comfortable. 
relaxed. The sling's carrying the load of the rifle, and it's gallery time. Target comes up, bang. Target goes down, plot the shot, the shot before, mark it down. I'm gonna do that for 10 shots. I'm gonna watch each one when it comes up, and it's gonna be 10 or an X, right? If you're not a 10 or an X on your first shot and you called it good, take a look at the wind. What's going on out there? Do I see mirage? If I see mirage in my wind call, I see a flag out there. We went to all at All Army, they, they gave us that little formula for figuring wind speed, the angle of the flag versus the velocity, you know, we can figure out the velocity. Out here, it is not uncommon for you to be 10 clicks left. 12 clicks, 14 clicks, left or right, depending on where the wind's coming from, or nothing at all. But back at 600, it's usually a couple of clicks one way or another. So you gotta watch that. You know, whatever it is at 300, you could probably double it at six, whatever that wind was for you at three. You might have to add that many more, double those clicks at 600. Okay, now what's been occurring besides positions between the 200 and the six? Little knob in the back, elevation, your come ups at 200 yards, whatever your 200 yards, zero it is, zero is, it is. You go back to 300, it should be a difference of three minutes. When you go back to 600 yards, it's another 10 minutes. And if you have quarter minute clicks from two to three, should be, bring you up um, 12 clicks. When you go from three to six, you should come up another 40. So that's, those are your come ups between yard lines. Critical to write that down. Whatever your 200 yard zero is, if you know what it is right now, we could give you something that might work for three and something that might work for six. But I can't do your wind for you. You're gonna have to do your wind. Using a 77 grain bullet, so we could work on these charts and then we'll work off of that. Um, it's an individual match, so you can't get coaching during the match. However, between relays, you could always go back and ask any of us military guys, hey, what's the wind worth? And they usually tell you, hey, it's worth four clicks. But you got to do it every time because the wind changes between the time this relay is going and that relay. So it may be different for you by the time you get up there. It could change from the time you grab your gear from the ready line to go up to the firing line. You got to be aware of that. What I like to do is grab a little bit of grass, throw it in the air. Take a look, guys. Where do you see that grass going? That's worth something. That grass is moving off to the right. Now it stopped. So that tells me that if I fired that 600-yard six, string right now, the shots would be moving around. So a good way to tell what way the wind's going is just throw a little grass in the air. Look around. People have flags tied to their scope stands, and that'll give you an idea of wind direction and maybe velocity. Um, but that's, I don't want you to have all that overnight. What I really want you to get out of this is that you have to build a position that gives you the best advantage to ensure that the rounds are going to go into your target within your time frame, within your real estate. Uh, what are your questions on either the 200 standing slow fire, the 300 rapid prone, or the 600 slow fire. Okay, we good on that? All right, check for now.